Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Look at this. It's Mike Matthews here in Podcastro Valley, Mont, the last place on earth, and a show called Mike's Daily Podcast. It's good to be here because it's episode 2429, 2429, and it's really fine. Did you see the cool picture of a friend of mine named Basil the Boxer? He was in the last picture in Venetia. And if you don't like that, then you should go see a creature called the Swamp Thing. Mike's Daily Podcast. The Swamp Thing is what you need to see that creature. Yes. Mike's Hmm? Daily Filmed in Florida. Podcast. Filmed in Florida, yes. Yeah! So that means Mike's going to have a picture from Florida today in the podcast picture. From his recent trip to Florida. I think that's an excellent idea. I want to talk to you about a beverage today that a lot of people enjoy. I'm talking about water. No, not talking about water. But there is water in it. That is something. And is it beer? No. But, okay. I have... I had a really bad experience drinking a beer just after the pandemic started. There's a friend of mine who worked at a brewery and he invited me over to because they had been closed down for a while and he says, hey, we're opening back up. It'd be great. Stop by, show a little support, etc. So I did. I went over there and uh, next thing I know, he's giving me a couple of different beers. I try this one. Try this one. Try this one. A guy who was working there told a very bizarre story of working at the Fairmont Hotel. No, 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 wait. The Che, the Che, the Chateau Marmont off the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. And that they, uh, Courtney Love was staying at the hotel. And here's today's podcast picture. And he used to be a bellhop there and uh, the front worked at the front desk and Courtney Love would tell him uh, called him up in the middle of the night and said I need a phone charger for my particular phone so he went over to her room and the next thing you know they're talking and she's telling her, him some very interesting thing. I, you know I couldn't verify anything in this story but the guy went on and on and it was pretty interesting so some of it's somewhat believable Apparently she had a lot of dresses Hanging on a huge rack of clothes That had been given to her The late great Basil the Boxer We would sometimes go to beer places But my point being After I went to this place And drank these beers I got quite sick In fact I did, when I got home The late great Basil the Boxer was still alive and he was he was hanging out there, and I I actually laid down on the couch next to him, and I I was moaning because I was in so much pain because of the the beers that I had had. And at that point, I said, "No more beer. I'm done." And I did not drink beer for quite a while, but then had one recently when I visited the same guy at a different brewery recently. But no, I'm talking about coffee. Coffee apparently has some benefits. Yes, even though you, you know, of course, drink too much, you get too antsy, but it can improve your overall health. An analysis of nearly 220 studies on coffee found that coffee drinkers may enjoy more overall health benefits than people who don't drink coffee. The analysis found that during the study period, coffee drinkers were 17% less likely to die early from any causes 19% less likely to die of heart diseases And 18% less likely to develop cancer Than those who don't drink coffee What the heck? How would that even happen? Be possible It protects against type 2 diabetes A 2014 study by Harvard researchers Published Tracked nearly 124,000 people For 20 years? That's a crazy study 
Those who increased their coffee intake by more than a cup a day over a four-year period had an 11% lower risk of de- developing type 2 diabetes. Now, that's not like a huge amount. Those who decreased their intake by one cup per day had a 17% higher risk of developing the disease. The reason may be the antioxidants in the coffee which reduce inflammation. And inflammation contributes to type 2 diabetes risk. However, if you do have type 2 diabetes, you should avoid caffeinated products, including coffee. Caffeine has been shown to raise both blood sugar and insulin levels in people with diabetes. This, uh, according to rush.edu. You, it can also control Parkinson's disease symptoms. A number of studies have shown. Research published in 2012 in the Journal of the American Academy of Neurology showed that a daily dose of caffeine equivalent to that found in two 8-ounce cups of black coffee can help to control the involuntary movements of people who already have the disease. You'd have to drink nearly 8 cups of brewed black tea to get the same amount of caffeine. It can slow the progress of dementia, this according to a 10-year-old study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. They tested the blood levels of caffeine in older adults with mild cognitive impairments, which can be a precursor to severe dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. When the researchers reevaluated the subjects two to four years later, those whose blood levels contain caffeine amounts equivalent to about three cups of coffee were less likely to have progressed to full-blown dementia than those who had consumed little or no caffeine. My mom had to have a cup of coffee every day. And she was as sharp as a tack. Even up to the moment she passed away. But it was other stuff that eventually led to her death that included uh, all kinds of um, circulatory things. Which apparently here, I don't see anything about that. Well, it does. Apparently coffee should, is supposed to promote heart health. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Mont. Uh, in February of last year, in the American Heart Association Journal, drinking one or more daily cups of plain caffeinated coffee was associated with a significant reduction in a person's long-time risk of heart failure. Keep in mind, though, my mom also smoked a lot. A lot. It is a safeguard for the liver, apparently, coffee. Several studies published in respected journals have found that coffee drinking has a beneficial effect on the liver, including reducing the risk of death from cirrhosis of the liver, decreasing harmful liver enzyme levels, and limiting liver scarring in people who have hepatitis C. It can reduce melanoma risk, and it, oh, by the way, it is possible that coffee helps to improve blood vessels control over blood flow and blood pressure. Hmm. A 2015 study appearing in the Journal of National Cancer Institute uh, looked at the coffee drinking habits of more than 447,000 people over 10 years, and they found that those who drank four or more cups of coffee caffeinated coffee each day had a 20% lower risk of developing melanoma than those people who drank decaffeinated coffee or no coffee. Now, the advice it gives here at rush.edu is don't doctor up your drink. Keep in mind that the research focuses on the benefits of black coffee. But we definitely know the harms associated with fat and sugar that you find in a lot of coffee. A lot of people add a lot of sugar to coffee. A venti white chocolate mocha, for example, has 580 calories, 22 grams of fat, 15% of which are, uh, 15 grams which are saturated fat, and 75 grams of sugar. A plain cup of brewed coffee has two calories. Two. That's it. No fat, zero carbs. 
If you can't drink it black, stick with low calorie, low fat add-ins, skim milk, almond milk. It's not true that coffee will stunt kids' growth, but there are good reasons for kids not to drink coffee. One study published in 2014 in the journal Pediatrics showed that even small amounts of caffeine increase the blood pressure of a child. And to compensate for the rise in blood pressure, it slowed their heart rate. And also could add to sleep disruption and behavioral issues. So, caffeine, however, can cause acid reflux, gastrointestinal, uh, rather gastroesophageal, the gastroesophageal sphincter relaxes due to caffeine, and that can cause the acid reflux. Acid enters the esophagus. Of course, it causes insomnia. There's some evidence, evidence showing that moderate to high coffee consumption is linked with calcium loss and fractures. That is something my mom had as well. So maybe not entirely completely helpful. Uh, but if you, drew, if you do drink decaf, definitely limit your consumption. Decaffeinated coffee has been associated with an increased risk of heart failure. Enjoy coffee in moderation is basically the bottom line here. But be aware of some of the problems. You get a lot of benefits in terms of if you if you rely on coffee to fight after lunch sluggishness every day, you might think about instead getting outside and going for a 10 to 20 minute walk instead and that will help with bone health and cardiovascular health this from rush.edu and that is the uh rush universal system for health they are apparently in chicago rush university chicago illinois my lovely lady friend went to college in chicago i don't think she went here though all right Look, we're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, last place on earth. I'll get my tell that. How about? A moist tell that. Look who's here. Oh my god, this is jelly too hard. What are you talking about with a moist tell that? It's a movie Jim Carrey did. I hate when people quote movies, but this is Man in the Moon. Not to be confused with Moonfall, which I watched it on his trailer, so I don't have to actually watch the movie about it. Oh my gosh. And it's funny because. Honest trailer has a guy doing the movie trailer voice thing. And just before he starts doing the trailer, he apparently loses oxygen in the voice, the voiceover room, the studio. So then he starts talking like Tarzan, like dumb guy, like moon fall on earth. Duh, duh. And it basically fits the movie because there's just all kinds of stupidity going on in it. But perhaps you've seen it and you love it and you love all the crazy big sci-fi stuff. Apparently it was also an Independence Day, the guys that made Independence Day and the the day after tomorrow and all these other movies where all kinds of cataclysmic events and stuff blow up. Look who else is here. Oh my, this is Floyd the Floor Man! And this is John Deere the Engineer. Yeah, my gift the moon falls on the earth. We're dead. Mm -hmm. Halle Berry's in it. That's right, Halle Berry's in it. Right on Halle Berry. Okay. So, you can chime in and tell me about anything you think about what we covered today. 336MM daily. 3 plus 3 equals 6MM is in Mike Matthews. Daily isn't what this podcast has been for a couple of days. But I know you don't exist. You're not real. You're not a real person. not a real human being. You don't exist. Because I don't have any listeners. My listeners don't exist. So, I don't expect to hear from you in any way, shape, or form. But if you would like to, I am on social media all over the place, except for TikTok. I don't believe in TikTok because I'm not 14. And I don't believe in helping out uh, some crazy, I, very suspect, this bite, whatever bit bite thing from China that that company is that runs TikTok. I don't like it. That's one thing I definitely agree with Trump on. Here, though, if you do exist, here are ways to reach me. 
Take us out, a friend. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.